Denver. We've really enjoyed our stay. We're very productive. Uh, it's like the cleanest city I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I just, I never, there's not anything out of place. And uh, in Florida, we, we do a pretty good job. Uh, but I think in other cities around America, there's uh, definitely some, some problems. They can, they can learn a th thing or two about how, uh, how Tokyo is run. And, um, but we think there's a lot of great opportunities. Uh, Japan is the number one foreign direct investor in the United States and has been for, for quite some time, but it's only the sixth in Florida, and our market is big. Uh, we're the uh, 15th, 13th largest economy in the world if we were our own country. More and more wealth moving into Florida every day. More people moving into Florida every, every, uh, every day. Yeah, there's some good things with that. There's also challenges, infrastructure, all this stuff. So we're, we're meeting those. But um, the, the reality is the future of the United States with how the population is, is moving uh, is going to be in these sunbelt states like Texas and Florida. I mean, you just see it. Uh, you see the movement. And, um, and I know that we've got a lot of great Japanese companies that are doing a lot in Florida as it is. But I absolutely think there's, uh, there's capacity to, to, to do more. We are uh, pitching the need or at least the desire to have direct uh, flights from Japan to Florida. We're the largest market in the United States by far that does not have direct transport to Japan. Now look, it's not, not the easiest thing because you go from <clears throat> Tokyo to California, that's a decent flight in and of itself. Then you got to go all the way across the United States to get to a place like Orlando or Miami. Although Japan Airlines was chartering for the WBC, they were bringing people in for that. It seemed to work very well. Obviously, it works well when Japan wins, and so you're able to go home happy. But um, but we so so we're mindful of it. Would be it, it's a long jaunt, and it limits their ability to do some cargo or whatever just because of of the fuel situation. But I do think that it would make a difference because Georgia is our state to, to our north of Florida. It has Atlanta as the biggest city there. Georgia has about 400 Japanese companies operating there. Florida, twice the size of the economy, we've got between like 100 and 200 Japanese companies. And I think part of the reason of that is just it's just more difficult uh, to, to do business travel. So, so that's something that we've uh, discussed. We've also discussed uh, working with JAXA on a space agreement. Uh, for, for collaboration going forward. We have an agreement that we've been doing for a number of years with Israel, and I think that similar to Israel, Japan is really strong in innovation and research, and so to marry that with our footprint down near Kennedy Space Center, particularly the manufacturing that's going on there, you know, there could be some, some great opportunities for collaboration. So we would love to be able uh, to do that, and I think that there's a lot of stuff. I also just say Florida, we're very supportive of expanding skills in our workforce. And that's not just you know, the engineers that are important for like the Space Coast. Yeah, we are doing that. But having skilled labor uh, that can work in manufacturing and building things, huge for us. And we've really increased the programs. You know, in our country, they had said for a long time when I was growing up, you have to go to college, a four-year college, otherwise you're not going to be successful. In reality, college may be one pathway to success. It's not the only way. And particularly as U.S. higher education, there's been a lot of kind of inflation in it where you'll have these fourth-tier universities cranking out degrees in like zombie studies, and people go into debt, and they have no, no chance of doing anything, really, when they get out. So, so it was, it's been oversubscribed over the years. So now there's, we're in the midst of a correction where people are looking at this and say, okay, I don't know that I want to do college. What are my options? Oh, I can end up becoming certified in welding, and then I can make you know, $80,000, $90,000 a year. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. So we, are, we have programs in place for all of that. And I mention that because well, one of the things we've never had in Florida is auto manufacturing. And I know we have like Toyota, some of the Japanese companies have done that in the US South. And to the extent that there's ever a need to expand and have more capacity, Florida would be a great place for that. I mean, I think we have a great business environment. We have the people that you would need, and then we have access to uh, these ports that could that could move product, particularly to Latin America. So that's just something something to think about, and uh, that would be something that would be really really good for us. 
And, um, you know, all said and done, I think that the, the relationship between Florida and Japan is, is, is growing stronger, which I think is good. And, of course, I think the relationship between the United States and Japan is very, very important as we look at the threats posed by the Communist Party of China, as we look at places like North Korea. Uh, a strong U.S.-Japan relationship is really the antidote for a lot of the, of the perils that we see in the Indo-Pacific region. So my hope is, is that uh, we'll continue those efforts. And I can tell you, we uh, in Florida have a great regard for the people here in Japan. We're very appreciative and admiring of the culture, uh, very admiring of the great businesses that have been built here um, over many, many years. These are really historic companies. So, uh, so thank you all for being a part of this, and we look forward to doing more with you in the future. Thank you, Governor.